It is the early morning hours of the 10th of July, 1945, at the Argentinian port of Mar del Plata. Fishing boats bob at their moorings, when suddenly, out of the fog, appears an astonishing sight. A German U-boat appears, slowly motoring towards the port. Her entire hull is covered in rust, the paint almost gone from her conning tower. The large submarine begins to signal using a Morse lamp. German submarine! We wish to surrender. U-530 had last been seen in March 1945, halfway around the world in Norway. Now, four months later, and over two months since Germany's surrender, U-530, in an extremely worn condition, had suddenly surfaced off Argentina. Where had she been, and what was her mission? Seventy-three years later, we still do not know exactly what this U-boat was up to stoking some outlandish conspiracy theories. But examining Argentinian, American and British interrogation reports, it is possible to suggest what U-530 may have been doing, and it is both extraordinary and terrifying. She may have been on a mission to attack the United States, ordered by the very highest echelon of the Nazi leadership. When Argentinian and Allied naval officers examined U-530, there were several strange things about the vessel. Firstly, her ship's log was missing, her fore and aft torpedo rooms were empty of torpedoes, and her deck gun was missing, jettisoned at sea. Her hull was found to be heavily rusting, the conning tower splitting apart. The corroded casing bore traces of a recent fire and a determined attempt had been made to sabotage her diesels. Not only that, her young 25-year-old captain was refusing to divulge any information about his voyage, other than speaking in generalizations. So, let's examine what we do know about U-530. She was a Type 9C-40 U-boat, commissioned in October 1942. In January 1945, her new commanding officer was Oberleutnant Otto Wermut. Of his mission, Wermut said he operated directly on orders from Berlin. On the 3rd of March 1945, he apparently left Christiansand in Norway to Horten in Oslofjord. Wermut said his U-boat had travelled submerged for three weeks, using its snorkel to recharge the batteries at night. The only radio messages sent by the U-boat were daily weather reports. He told U.S. investigators that he had entered American coastal waters on the 24th of April and observed radio silence since then. Vermut sailed very close to New York City and through the periscope said he observed trains and cars on land. When Germany surrendered, Grand Admiral Karl Dönitz issued a radio broadcast to all U-boats at sea to surface and to head to an Allied port to surrender. Wermut had heard this order on the 8th of May 1945. So why did he disregard this order from his commander-in-chief and head for Argentina? And why did the voyage of only two weeks take two months? Interrogators noted that Wermut was very cagey in discussing what had happened to the U-boat's deck gun. At the time, it was suggested that the gun was the clue to solving the mystery of U-530. Argentinian archives suggested that U-530 was on a special operation to the U.S. East Coast. She sailed shortly after the bombing of Dresden. Hitler ordered nerve gas shells fired at New York. Germany had certainly produced huge quantities of extremely lethal toxins and nerve gases. Although Hitler's order is in the OKW, the Oberkommando der Wehrmacht War Diary, that is the high command of the German armed forces, it was suggested that he was talked out of this plan by Field Marshal Keitel and Colonel General Jodl. But it is interesting to note that Oberleutnant Wermut stated that for this unspecified mission he was under direct orders from Berlin and not from Naval High Command Headquarters. Interrogation documents had also showed that there had been some kind of conflict between the crew aboard U-530. The gun had been jettisoned at sea shortly thereafter. Wermut's decision to head for Argentina rather than surrender to the United States would be understandable if this was his mission. 
It would also explain why his logbook had been destroyed, the crew carried no identification papers, and also the torpedoes were missing from the vessel, uh, both of the torpedo rooms having been cleared out for some other purpose. Presumably, if indeed this had been Wermut's mission, some conflict had erupted amongst the crew, and perhaps some had disagreed with carrying out such an attack. Eventually, the gun had been jettisoned along with its ammunition, and the crew had headed to a neutral port to surrender. Some have argued that there is a more innocent explanation that ditching the heavy deck gun and ammunition and torpedoes was to decrease the weight of the submarine and increase its range, but it still doesn't explain why a two-week voyage took two months. Shortly after the U-boat's arrival in Argentina, rumours began to spread amongst the local press that the submarine had landed high-ranking Nazis on the Argentine coast, perhaps even Hitler and Eva Braun. But these rumours had more to do with fevered imaginations than reality. I can't provide you any answers to this mystery. However, I'll let you decide what happened aboard U-530 in March to July 1945. And incredibly, this is not the end of the story. For a month after U-530 appeared in Argentina, another German U-boat surfaced and surrendered in exactly the same place. Next time, the strange story of U-977 is revealed. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, please do subscribe and share, and also support me on Patreon. Many thanks.